Hello everyone and welcome to the other decisive game from round 8 of this year's Tata Steel Masters edition. Uh, it is uh, Yanni Pomnishi versus Noderbeck Abdusatarov and it's a really really wild game. Noderbeck just had a brilliant victory in the previous round. Uh, he defeated Anish Giri last year's winner and now he faces one of the candidates of the FIDE candidates tournament, uh, Yanni Pomnishi. So let's uh, see what happened here. It's a really nice game. i uh, sure you guys will enjoy it. He goes pawn to e4, Nepo. Uh, we have pawn to e5 by Noderbeck knight to f3, knight to c6 and now bishop to c4 the italian game is on the board we have knight f6 the two knights defense and now not everyone's favorite knight g5 but rather d3 and the, the modern bishop's opening the slow approach we have bishop to e7 and castles by both players we have rook to e1 and pawn to d6 so the main line nothing new happening here and pawn to a4 uh, which is usually met with um, uh, knight to a5 and uh, it's a similar idea that you will find in uh, for example even in the Rui Lopez where you want to advance the c uh, the c pawn all the way to c5 to control the center and then uh, you will figure out what, what happens with the knight probably you just bring it back uh, or you go bishop to e6 which is what uh, Noderbeck does uh, and Jan just goes pawn to a5 usually knight b to d2 is played here a5 is already a fairly rare idea and uh, Noderbeck just plays b uh, captures on c4 now interestingly Daniel Dubov had this position three times with the black pieces and in all three games Daniel went pawn to a6 but Dubov goes bishop captures on c4 he ruins Nepo's pawn structure and now D captures on C4. And yes, you, you do have a double C pawn, but you do have nice control over the uh, center. And later on, you will be able to give up that pawn with a pawn push like C5. Uh, and if not, you will still just have the control of the center. So it's a pretty uh, fine position. We have pawn to B6 and now just bishop to D2, where Noderbeck uh, needs to make a decision. Does he want to capture an e A5 or does he want to leave the pawn there where Nepo will have some future option of going a capture some b6 or maybe even uh going uh full full forward with pawn to a6 and sort of cramping the position so Noderbeck does trade knight captures we have bishop captures on a5 b captures and rook captures we have pawn to c6 now putting pressure on the rook and uh, maybe even preparing d5 and nepo goes back with rook to a2 now uh, if you had this position, rook to a6 looks like a really nice move. You know, you, you keep the tension, you keep an active rook, you put pressure on the c6 pawn, but rook to a2 is the top move recommended by the engine, and uh, yeah, I imagine Nepo has uh, everything still prepared as he spent literally no time getting to this uh, position. Uh, and... Um, uh now uh it is now of course uh, as of move uh, 13 that we have a completely new game there is a game that was played in 1997 where pawn to b4 was played and although i always say that pawn to b4 is the strongest move here is it's one of those positions where it's really not uh, it, it gets nicely countered by pawn to d5 which was missed in the game from 1997 but okay rook to a2 by nepo and now uh queen to c7 continuing development connecting rooks we have knight to c3 uh, and now pawn to a5, stopping any b4 ideas that Noderbeck might have. So queen to e2, uh, and now knight to d7. The knight can be remaneuvered to b6 to put pressure on c4, also to maybe help the pawn advance even further. Uh, plus you have support for f5 or f6 uh, if needed. Uh, so pawn to b3 by Nepo and knight to c5. The knight is excellently placed here. There is no d pawn to kick it away and the b4, of course, uh, cannot be played. So here knight to a4, offering a trade of knights, but um, uh, doing so would only help Nepo. If Noderbeck traded here, then Nepo has a clear rook e to a1, goes after the a5 pawn, you can put more pressure, uh, you get the knight into the game, uh, so it's going to be very, very hard to defend that pawn. So instead, knight back to e6 by Noderbeck, now eyeing that d4 square and now nepo plays pawn to c5 what we've discussed yes he does have a double pawn a uh, double c pawn but he can always just give it away and uh what can Noderbeck play well he could just ignore it play something like rook 8 to d8 or rook f to d8 but he actually captures the pawn d captures on c5 so now he's up a pawn uh, but his uh, beautiful central pawn structure is ruined we have knight back to b2 now as there is no more uh possibility of d5 nepo's knight is coming to c4 from where it will attack the weak a5 pawn and the weak e5 pawn so how can Noderbeck play this well okay knight to d4 you would very much enjoy 
if Nepo just traded here and you could undouble your pawns. Uh, but uh, he just moves the queen. Queen to d3 and now we have queen to b8. Uh, interestingly, rook f to d8 doesn't really do all that much. There are no useful discoveries with the knight. Whatever you capture, the white queen is defending that so the white queen can just capture it back. So queen to b8 first. Um, uh, preparing to bring the queen all the way to b4 and uh, now uh, Noderbeck needs to figure out how to defend this position a5 will be under attack and also e5 will be under attack once knight to c4 lands uh, so first rook a to e1 attacking the pawn and now rook to d8 uh, trying to trying to give up the a5 pawn for some nasty discoveries and here if you capture an a5 then knight captures an f3 comes with check and if queen captures rook captures an a5 and after rook captures maybe this queen to b4 could be a little bit annoying uh, coming to d2 putting pressure on c2 once the the rook returns so there's no need for nepo to rush anything after this um, uh, rook to d8 move nepo just played pawn to g3 uh, getting rid of any back rank issues uh, that he might have queen to b4 and now only now knight to c4 and now you have a problem your a5 is attacked and your e5 is attacked uh, how do you play this well best would be to play f6 give up the a5 pawn and you know hope uh, hope for the best but Noderbeck tried to solve this uh, tactically he played knight to b5 with the idea of queen to c3 and now Nepo just moves the queen as the queen is under attack queen to e3 and now queen to c3 just knight f captures an e5 also putting pressure on that c6 pawn but okay Noderbeck will eliminate the e4 pawn uh, rook 8 to c8 defending the c6 pawn and now queen Queen captures queen on c3. Knight captures on c3. Rook captures on a5. And knight captures on e4. Uh, the material is equal. But this is what Nepo wanted when he played that pawn to c5 move. Uh, the double c pawns are very very hard to defend. And the c2 pawn which is the base of the pawn chain. And if you want to take anything on the queen side. You have to first eliminate the c2 pawn. It's very very hard to reach. There is no way to kick away the knight from c4. And as long as the knight is on c4. There is no uh, way you're playing knight to d2 so uh here knight to b6 attacking the rook rook to c7 and now rook to a8 not allowing um any rook to d2 ideas as uh, you would just uh, lose tactically uh, even a slow move here is just uh, dead lost for another way like he plays h6 you just capture on d8 with check play rook e8 and that's it there's no way to uh, defend the bishop so f6 attacking the knight he has to allow the other rook on the back rank rook captures on d8 bishop captures and rook to a8 putting pressure on the bishop so f captures on e5 it's the only thing you have rook captures on d8 with check and now king to f7 and once again knight back to c4 and now again Noderbeck has the weak uh, double c pawns and the weak e pawn uh, and Nepo really without any weaknesses in the position the c2 pawn is weak but the rook will uh, reach it very hard and uh, well the knight needs uh, a lot of moves to, um, uh, to get to that pawn you have to play something like knight g5 knight e6 knight to d4 and then attack it but that's a lot of moves so here first king to e6 by Noderbeck king to g2 we have knight back to f6 and now king to f3 and here uh, it's very hard to find an active plan for Noderbeck. Be best uh, hope for is that uh, Nepo is unable to uh, push this to, to win. Maybe play g5, h5, keep that white king at bay. But he played pawn to e4 with check. At least getting rid of the uh, pawn from e5. On e4 it's nicely defended by the knight. Uh, but uh, you allowed the white king into the game. King to f4. Uh, and uh, now comes king to e7. Just uh, waiting to see what uh, Nepo will do. This attacks the rook. We have rook back to d6. Uh, and now rook to c8 maybe trying to get uh, all the way to the second rank maybe to undermine those pawns pawn to h3 and now knight to e8 kicking away the rook from this active square uh, we have rook back to d1 and just knight to f6 Noderbeck was very low on time he had some two minutes on the clock Nepo had maybe 40 minutes on the clock and uh, two more moves need to be made to reach time control and it's very interesting that Nepo is the one who actually repeats rook d6 knight to e8 rook back to d2 knight to f6 and now he goes knight to d6 so it's like uh, he wanted uh, Noderbeck to gain additional time uh, in order to to just crush him you know uh, uh ever so masterfully with Noderbeck having uh sufficient time on the clock he didn't just want to uh, allow Noderbeck to say okay I lost I didn't have enough time on the clock no Nepo wants to prove that he can uh just push this to a full point uh and here uh if you go something like rook to d8 which seems like a good idea knight to f5 check just uh, ends the game 
you have to defend your rook, uh, but g7 pawn will fall. So you play king e8, now this pawn falls with check. You move, now rook falls, and after king uh, goes to d8, knight e6 check will pick up the c5 pawn, then you will pick up the e4 pawn, and you, you'll just eliminate all of the pawns. So instead, rook to a8 by Norderbeck, now comes knight captures on e4, grabbing more material. Knight to d5 check, king to e5 and now pawn to c4 trying to ruin uh, nepos pawn structure now b captures on c4 and knight to b6 going after the c4 pawn but just rook to e2 another back says uh, nepos says you can have that pawn so another back captures it with check king d4 and now knight to a3 uh, putting pressure on c2 but um not really not really a problem just pawn to c4 uh, also the knight does have some discoveries but uh, going after the dh7 pawn would just be greedy you can always take that there's no need to rush it uh, rook to b8 and now we have rook to a2 again knight g5 check goes after the pawn but nepo says uh, nope it's time to go after the knight the knight really doesn't have uh, all that many squares this is covered by the pawn covered by the king um, uh, c2 covered by the rook you can go to b1 uh, but if you go knight to b1 then rook to a a7 check and then you just allow king to c5 and you just get destroyed so here rook to a2 uh, and now uh, rook to a8 just defending that knight and now rook to b2 we have king to e6 uh, king to c3 now uh, we have king to e5 and now knight to d2 defending the c4 pawn and now it's a question whether that knight can escape if you attack it with the rook and with the king uh, how is the knight to escape well uh, there is a way uh, rook to a7 is played now comes rook to b3 uh, putting pressure on the knight king to e6 and now uh, it seems like king to b2 just traps the knight there's no square for the knight but uh, Noderbeck uh, had the rook to d7 in mind and now you capture the rook the knight uh, Noderbeck captures Nepo's knight so there's no again no need to rush this knight to f1 by Nepo King to d6 and now knight back to d2. King to e6. Here, uh, Nepo, I believe, repeated he wanted to give Noderbeck a chance to play king to c5 in order to deliver this knight to e4 checkmate uh, as c5 is in check and d6, d6 is covered by the knight. So it would be funny, but you never know. You know, people do run, uh, in, uh, walk right into checkmate. So, of course, Noderbeck goes back, king e6. Now pawn to h4. King to f5 and just pawn to f3, uh, fully controlling that black king. Uh, pawn to h6, now comes rook to b6, putting pressure on the c6 pawn, uh, rook to e7, and now knight to e4. Notice that, uh, okay, the rook is not attacking the knight, but there's still no way for that knight to get into the game. This is covered, this is covered, this is covered, uh, and the, the b1 square is covered. So it's just, uh, you know, a useless piece. Uh, we have pawn to g5, and Nepo trades once. Captures, captures, and now eliminates the c6 pawn. So now Nepo is up two pawns, and of course you know that uh, when you're up two pawns in an endgame, you are completely winning, unless it's one of those positions. Uh, pawn to g4, trying to mess up um, the pawn structure, maybe you can, you know, uh, for force uh, Nepo to capture somehow and then eliminate the two pawns uh, but just knight to d6 with check and now the problem is it doesn't matter where you go if you go king to e5 or king to uh, g5 just a pawn to f4 with check to give you an example pawn to f4 checking h5 rook to c5 with check king g6 and now you just deliver a check and well you can even pick up one more pawn or even if king to h6 check you can go for knight to f5 check picking up the rook um so, you know, not the best. So, Nepo goes king to f6. It looks like it runs into a very nasty discovery, but, of course, you can always block check with the rook. So, knight to c8 check, rook to e6, and now rook captures on e6. So, of course, Nepo will go into uh, knight and pawn endgame, as the knight on a3 has no squares. King captures on uh, e6, and now pawn to f4. And he was in this position, on move 65, that uh, Noderbeck Abdusator resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Your knight cannot... Can never enter the game and uh, well since the knight can't enter the game it's merely a matter of pushing pawns and you win that's that's all there is to it uh, even if something like king f5 you will play knight to d6 check uh, stop the king from advancing and if king to e6 just knight b5 you offer a trade and now if you trade you're just up two pawns and if you go knight to b1 check still king c2 and you have no squares the knight covers a3 uh, you just lose uh, so, very interesting uh, game. Uh, it was uh, just a you know positional masterpiece by Nepo against Noderbeck, who who just around prior to this one uh, had his positional masterpiece to Anish Giri, last year's winner. Uh, notice that, that I did not have a pause the video moment because it was just a, a very very slow squeeze. It was uh, you know there there was no 
real mistake that ended the game for another big it was just you know uh you know g give a little bit to your opponent then give a little bit more then give a little bit more and over time you know the 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 advantage is uh just uh, uh, com uh you know compiled and uh uh, th that's all there is. So th there was no mistake or anything that I could make pause the video moment. It was just a beautifully played uh, game by Nepo. He prepared this uh, uh, very rare line very masterfully. I don't know, maybe maybe he did discuss it with Dubov a little bit as Dubov does play this with black. So maybe he asked him, how, how do you approach this with white? Or maybe it's just something that the, the you know the, the Russians just know about this line. Uh, or, you know, maybe it's some leftover from, from the World Chess Championship match that he never used. You, you never know. Uh, but yeah, brilliant stuff by Nepo, and uh, since um, uh, this is the last game we'll be showing from round 8, let's uh, check out the standings after round 8. So we have a three-way tie, uh, Anish Giri, Gukesh, and Alireza Firuja on five points. Uh, in close pursuit on four and a half points, we have Yanni Pomnishi, Pragnananda, and Noderbek Abdusatrov, uh, and uh, uh, Vidit Gujarati. So had Noderbek won this, uh, he would be in sole lead with five and a half, but Nepo had something to say about that. On four points, Max Farmerdam and the Wei Yi. Uh, interestingly, uh, on 10 and 11, we have the two world champions, Ju Wenchun and Ding Liren. Uh, on three points, Jordan Van Forest, um, uh, also one of the winners of the of the Tata Steel, Parha Maksulu and Alexander Donchenko on two and a half. And the, the other the results of the other games, if you guys are interested, here you have Vidit and uh, Donchenko drew their game, uh, Max Varmedon and Prague drew their games. Uh, Ju Wenjun Gukesh, uh, also a draw. Gukesh was really trying to push for a win with the extra pawn, but um, was unable to do so. Jan defeated Noderbeck, uh, Anish and Wei Yi was a draw. Uh, Alreza defeated uh, Ding Liren. And if you haven't seen it in my previous video, do check it out. Really wonderful stuff by Alireza uh, and Jordan and uh, Parham uh, drew their games. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, some little, uh, a little bit of info about the event. Lo very much looking forward to round nine. If you guys are interested, I can also tell you the pairings of round nine. Haven't really prepared that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys would be interested in that. So in round nine, we will have Donchenko versus uh, Alireza Firuja. Ding will face Anish Giri, so a big matchup. Gukesh will face Virit, also a big matchup. Uh, Maxulu will face Max Farmerdam. Uh, Abdu Satro will face Jordan Van Forest. Uh, Wei Yi will face Yanni Pomeshi, also a big game for Yanni if he can do something with the black pieces there, but also for Wei Yi with white. And Pregnananda will face women's world champion Ju Wenjun. So again, I mean, all of the games are interesting. Uh, we, we will, uh, every round is just, uh, you know, full, full of action, full of surprises. And I can't wait for it to, to, to start. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank Johan Klesens, Len Herbert, uh, Yun Yang, an anonymous person, and Christopher and Ruth Burkett for your contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.